Let's stand to our feet today and worship Jesus. Come on. Oh, do you see what I see? Oh, I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Oh, I see signs and I see wonders. I see bursts of living color. Oh, dead things coming back to life again. I believe. There's about to be another resurrection. So come alive, wake up, sleeper. He is risen, and we are risen with him. Oh, hallelujah. about to be another resurrection. Oh, come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are risen with him.
used to go through the motions when the king is in the room hear the sound of our devotion let it build a throne for you let it build a throne for you let everything that has breath pray
Vision Sunday. What an exciting Sunday. We've got a lot to cover, but can I tell you something? I love that no matter how busy we allow ourselves to get here at Connection Point, we always start the morning off right with a time of worship, amen? Speaking of worship, we had a night of worship last night, and if you were here, you know how incredible it was. What an amazing time. If you missed it, don't worry. We will have another one. We'll see you then. What an awesome time we had. And if you uh, don't know, you might've seen on the news that the Lyft Ministry was out here along with some CPC participants and they stayed out overnight outside. Yes, you heard me correctly, the entire night to raise awareness um, uh, for homelessness and to raise funds for the Salvation Army Warming Center. So can we take a quick moment and give those uh, individuals a round of applause? Well, welcome everyone, it's good to have you. I'm Jared and I just wanna say thank you for joining us this morning at Connection Point. If you are watching online, thank you for tuning in. And if you are new here, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, feel free to text the word uh, guest to 573-340-4037 or scan the QR code. If you have any questions that you would like us to answer, we would love to get to know you a little bit better. Um, and uh, answer any questions that you might have. You all might've noticed we have a new groups wall out there in the lobby. And so now we have three different ways to get your information about groups. You can go to yourcpc.church slash groups. You can go to the next steps uh, desk out there in the lobby, or you can visit the group wall. So if you, uh, excuse me, if you have not done so, feel free to visit that group wall before you leave this morning. As we move from a time of worship in our singing, we move to a time of worship in our giving. And um, if you feel uh, move to give this morning. You can text the amount that you would like to give to 84321. You can go online at yourcpc.church slash give. Uh, you can visit the drop boxes in the back of the worship center before you leave, or you can send in your offering to the address on the screen. Pray with me. Lord, thank you so much for this day and for this opportunity to gather with like-minded believers to celebrate you, to focus on you, to learn about you, we are so grateful for that. We pray that you would bless our time and the offering that we have prepared for you this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Because of your partnership with us and your giving, we are able to bless so many people around the world. One such group we wanna talk a little bit about this morning is, a, is an orphanage. Um, and I could tell you a little bit more but instead, I think we'd rather just show you. Take a look.
I want to make sure you understand the gravity of the video you just watched. Uh, every week when you come in and you go to the cafe and you buy that coffee, you buy an espresso drink, of course, co the regular coffee's free, the espressos you buy. So just off of the things you buy, okay? Uh, one, it's really good coffee, amen. Uh, the price is better than pretty much any other coffee shop you're going to go to, amen. Um, but here's what you need to understand, and maybe some of you don't know this. We don't keep any profit off of the cafe. All of the, every, once we pay the expenses, everything else goes away. In fact, every quarter, the cafe will choose a different mission or a charity and whatever profits were made in that quarter because of your purchases on the weekend, all that money is given away. And just the, court, the fourth quarter profits that you gave by purchasing through the cafe, that money was given away. And watch this, watch this, watch this. That is the money that was used to provide Christmas presents and Christmas parties for 400 orphans in Belarus this past year. Come on. I am absolutely amazed at what God can do when the church is in alignment with his mission and his will. When there are people who want God to work through them and they're willing to let the Holy Spirit have his way. I am amazed at the beauty and the power of the church in action. When the church is in action, when the church is operating like the church is supposed to, there, are, there is the love and the light and the hope and the grace and the forgiveness and the message of the gospel that gets spread all over the world. And even this morning, without you even thinking about it, the profits off the coffee you, you purchase here at this church is providing Christmas presents for orphans across the world. How many of you are amazed at what God can do through people in Jackson, Missouri? if we just let the Holy Spirit do his work. Amen. I love the church. I love the church of Jesus Christ when it's being the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you here on, and I love our online campus. By the way, can we just give it up for the online campus right now and encourage you to download our message notes off of any of our media outlets right now? And I want to say a special hello to some who are watching down in Florida and our hearts are with you and we love you. And many around the world are, are watching us today and we send our love out to you. Uh, listen, I love the church when the church is in action. This, uh, I shared this last night, the night of worship. My heart got grieved yesterday. I was in the gym and I was in one section of the locker room and there were some boys over in the other section. They didn't see me. They didn't know me. I don't know them. And, and I mean this with all due respect, but I heard one of them talking about, you know, how he grew up in a certain church, very strict with rules and doctrines. And, and uh, he said, it just turned me against God. It turned me against it. And, and now he's uh, making money and going to college. And he was talking about his, uh, his choices with these other guys who were talking to him. And he made this statement. Here's what broke my heart. He made this statement. He said, I'm living for myself now. And I just believe if I live for self, everything else will fall into place. To which one of the other young men who were with him said, yeah, I understand, my dad's a pastor. And then as they were getting ready to leave, they said to this other guy, bro, you got your head on straight. And my heart was grieved because I was thinking, is that really what life is all about? Me, myself, and I, and everything else just kind of falls into place? And maybe you're in this room today, or maybe you're watching online, and, and maybe you've had some negative church experiences. And here's what I want to say to that, that group of young men, and I want to say to you, don't blame Jesus for a bad church experience that was messed up by humans and not by the Holy Spirit. Don't blame God for bad teaching. Don't blame God for bad attitudes. Don't blame God for humanity. Understand this, that when the church is in alignment with Jesus, that's when the church becomes a place of acceptance and love and grace and forgiveness and healing and hope. And I want to tell you that the answer to the world's problems, the answers to loneliness, the answers to racism, the answers to hate, the answers to greed, the answers to self-centeredness is the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we think less of us and more about him and we receive God's forgiveness and God's grace and God's healing and God's hope, I'm telling you, I'm not against the church. 
I love the church because it is God's people, fallen as we are, finding the grace and the power of God transforming our lives. I wonder how many in this church today would say, thank God there's a church here this morning letting lives be changed and transformed without judgment as we're all trying to seek the face of Almighty God this morning. Anybody glad you're here? I love the church when the church isn't thinking about themselves, when the church is focusing on Jesus. Because then it's not about us, amen? It's not about us, it's all about him. It's gotta be less of us and more about him. And so today what I wanna do real quickly is I wanna share with you a little bit about what the church in action looks like. Then we're gonna look at what God has done in 2023 and I'll cast a little vision for 2024. And listen, 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 don't run off because we're gonna end the day together on our faces before God asking him to move among us just like he did when he birthed the church on the birthday of the church found in Acts chapter two and the day of Pentecost. If you want to take your Bibles or grab your message notes and together let's go there and let's see what happened in Acts chapter two. You were with me last Sunday, you know that uh, this is 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. Jesus has ascended to the right hand of the Father. He has given the work of his church over to his followers. They went back to Jerusalem, got in an upper room and began praying because they needed the power of the Holy Spirit to do with them what they could not do in and of themselves. And here's what the Bible says. Look what happened next. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Shout, they're all together. Just like I told you last week, they're positioned, right? They're, they're taking advantage of these gatherings with other believers. They are praying and seeking God together. And then suddenly, everybody shout the word suddenly. Come on online campus, put that down in the comments. Suddenly, a circle that in your Bible, suddenly a sound like a violent, watch this, this is so graphic. Listen to the detail here. A violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were staying and they saw, somebody shout, they saw this. See, 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 before I go any further, remember this. This Acts is a history book. Luke, the physician, is writing a detailed orderly account of what he has researched. This is not metaphorical. This is not symbolic. He is not lavishing anything up. This is a concrete historical account. They literally saw a manifestation. Something amazing happened. It grabbed their attention. Look at it. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem, devout people from every nation under heaven. Where did these people come from? These are Jews who were sent out during the dispersion after the Babylonian captivity Jews now lived in many countries. And why are they in Jerusalem? Well, according to Jewish law, three times a year in three of the festivals, and Pentecost was one of those festivals, Jewish men were to come back to Jerusalem and worship at the temple. So the, the Jerusalem is filled with devout Jews, Jews following the law of Moses. And they're coming and they're in the city. And watch what happened. When the sound occurred, a crowd came together and they were confused. Why were they confused? Because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And look at this, they were astounded, astounded and amazed. And look at what they said, read this out loud with me. Come on congregation, look, aren't all these speaking Galileans? Stop for a moment. Why is that so important for you to know? Well, let me say this the best way I know how. These are Jews speaking about other Jews, but they're from a region called Galilee, Galileans. And the way Galileans were known, the best way I know to say it, I'm gonna say this very respectfully, these would have been considered country bumpkins, <laughs> all right? Galileans were looked down upon by the other Jews. They were looked down upon because of their accent. 
Every once in a while, somebody likes to still make fun of some of the words I say because I'm from Kentucky. And they'll say, oh, but listen, I'm not ashamed for being from Kentucky. And I'm not ashamed now to be living in misery. Now, Missouri, all right. We're all in this thing together, amen. <laughs> but they would listen to the tone. They would listen to their accent. And they were classified as uneducated. And uh, they were looked at as being um, uh, uncivilized. They were country bumpkins and people would make fun of them and they were amazed. Why are they amazed? Because here's what they're saying. Watch this, look at the verse. And they were all amazed. Each one of them said, look, aren't these all Galileans? How is it? Here's the question. How is it that we hear them in our own native language? In layman's terms, what they were saying was, how can they be speaking in my language when they can barely speak their own? They're amazed. These, these, these Jews, these disciples are speaking in other languages that were real literal languages, but they were languages unlearned to them. Now listen, look at verse 11. And we hear them declaring the magnificent acts of God in our own tongues. What did they hear? When there was, it wasn't gibberish. It wasn't just tongues going everywhere, no one knowing what in the world's being said. The people there in the crowd that day, they were hearing the magnificent works of God. They were hearing about Jesus who died and was buried and rose from the grave. They're hearing the gospel in their own languages. And look at the verse 12, read with me now. They were astounded and they were perplexed and they said to one another, and here's the whole reason God did this, is to bring them to this moment. I'm gonna hit more on this next Sunday. They brought, he brought them to this moment. What does this mean? I want to tell you something that when the church of Jesus Christ is lined up in a, a missional alignment with God and we are positioned and God begins to work through us, if we are in the right position, God does a work that those outside of the faith look at and they're astounded and they look at who God is using and they come back saying, how is this happening? I don't know about you, but that's exactly what I want our community to say when they watch what God is doing here at CPC. I want them to say, that preacher's not that good, I've heard him. That church isn't that good, I know some of them folk that go over there. I want them to say, only God could be orchestrating what's happening down there at that church on Deerwood Drive. Can I get a witness from somebody? Listen, this is what happened in the early church. And there's three takeaways that I want you to grab from this because, uh, and we'll get those in a moment, but here's something I need you to understand. Uh, when these Jews who are there and they're devout, they know the scriptures, they know the Old Testament. When we read about what happened on the day of Pentecost, we see fire, we hear thundering and rushing wind, we hear all these people preaching the gospel. And for us, it's amazing all by itself. But to a first century Jew, this would have been incredible. Because we look at it and we just got caught up with the fire and the tongues and the, and the wind. But the Jews would have seen something you and I wouldn't have never caught. This looks exactly like what they were taught in the synagogues about something that had happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. Back on their first Pentecost. By tradition, the Jews look back at the day when they were in the wilderness, just came out of Egypt, and Moses was on top of Mount Sinai, and God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses as that was their first Pentecost. And what I want to show you real quickly is if you went back to Exodus 19, Exodus 20, and read about the day God gave the law of Moses and birthed the nation of Israel on Mount Sinai, and you look at what happened in Acts chapter 2 when God birthed the church, look at the similarities. Look on the screen. On Mount Sinai, they heard the thundering power of God as the mountain thundered and it quaked. And in Acts chapter two in the upper room, they heard the violent rushing mighty wind. 
On Exodus, in Exodus, they saw fire on the mountain. And when those disciples went down on the streets and out of that upper room, the people saw fire land on top of each disciple as they were anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Exodus, they heard God speak in their own language. They've been, they've been for 400 years as slaves in Egypt having to speak Egyptian, but on Mount Sinai, God spoke in their native tongue of Hebrew, and now you've got, you've got Jews from other nations speaking other languages in Jerusalem, and everyone heard the word of God in their own language. God gave his word on the mountain, written on tablets, but in Acts chapter two, God fulfilled the prophet, uh, Jeremiah, I believe, words that said, I will make a new covenant with you and I will not write my word on tablets of stone, but I'll write my word on your heart. And that day, the word of God got written on the hearts of the believer. On, the Pente on Sinai, that's the day God took a group of slaves and made the nation of Israel, watch this, watch this. On Pentecost, God took a bunch of sinners and he redeemed them through the blood of Jesus and he birthed his church. On Sinai, the mountain was full of God's presence. Everyone could see the presence of God. When the people came into Jerusalem on Pentecost, they saw believers filled with the spirit of God. Listen, I'm telling you, when you hear a rushing wind, you see fire landing on somebody's head and you hear all these people speaking in multiple languages and they're all praising Jesus, you would have said they're filled with something. The skeptic said they were all drunk with new wine, but Peter says, and I'll show you next week, they were filled with the spirit of God. In Exodus, after this, when they got to the promised land, the priest would begin a new tradition. Every Pentecost, they'd take two loaves of bread with new yeast in it, representing that God's given them a new, uh, a new covenant and a new land. And you would look at it and say, why two loaves? The answer didn't come until Pentecost with, uh, in Acts chapter two, because salvation now and the Holy Spirit is given to two people groups, Jews, and Gentiles, and every one of you here today ought to give God some praise. You watching online, you ought to put your hands together and thank God for Acts chapter two, because that's the day the Holy Spirit came to bring the gospel to people of all races so that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and we can be saved now because of the gospel is now for everyone, amen? amen. Hallelujah for the gospel. Now, we're gonna quickly exegete this passage and I'm gonna show you three big takeaways, three big picture things I want you to see. I don't have time to get down in some of the nitty gritty that you may want me to. That'll come later, but today, three big takeaways and here's the first one. Here's what I want you to see and why this is so important. You see a church here being birthed in a church that's gonna become active for Jesus. What can we learn from that? Why is that so relevant for us? Because when you look at this, here's what you see. Number one, write this down. You see that God empowers ordinary people who are in position and ready for God to use. Think about who was in that upper room. Peter was in that upper room. An old loud mouth fisherman who had just betrayed the Lord. Who was in that upper room? James and John. Two young men, brothers, who were nicknamed the Sons of Thunder. They just soon call fire down and consume you if you disagree with them as they were to give you the gospel. I mean, Jesus had to do a work on their spirit, amen? Who is in the room? Andrew, who you couldn't get a word out of him. Who's in that upper room? Thomas, a man who had to see it to believe it. Who's in that upper room? You got an accountant a businessman, who's in that upper room? You got old laborers and fishermen and zealots. Who's in that upper room? You've got women included. And women were never included in the first century writings, but they are in the Bible because God says they're just as valuable as the men. And God wants you to see, listen, watch this. There were just ordinary people, blue collar, white collar, men, women, people of all backgrounds and all, all kinds of lifestyles and past and all of them are in the upper room. And guess what? God took all this diversity and he made them one. The only common denominator they had was that they all loved Jesus and they were all together together, enjoying fellowship, positioned in a fellowship, on their knees, in prayer, waiting for God to move, 
And then look at verse uh, chapter two, verse two. What's the first word? I had you circle a moment ago. Come on, online campus. Suddenly, Suddenly God moved. You know what I love about God? is that uh, he can move when you least expect it. And some of the greatest works God's gonna do through Connection Point Church, I dare say, will be him working through things we didn't plan out in advance. Do I believe in planning? Do I believe in preparing? Absolutely. Jesus said, if you wanna build a tower, do you not first sit down and count the cost? Make sure you got enough to finish it. At least people mock you when the tower is unfinished. I believe we're to do all we can do. But this is then you put yourself in position and just like this church did, and you get on your knees and you say, God, here's all I can do. It, we're gonna fail though if you don't show up. God, will you work? And when you're in position and this is your spirit, this is your heart at all times, God can work suddenly without any warning. God can move through a people who are in the right position. Amen? You buying a cup of coffee, you don't even know it. You're blessing a child in Belarus. God can work through us in ways we never even hoped or imagined if we'll just make sure that we have our heart right and we're in position and we know that God can use people just like us. Don't you know there are people in this room today and watching online that say, I don't know if God can use someone like me. You need to look in this group and realize the people in the upper room that God birthed his church with were people no different than you. They were people just like you and people just like me. Look at your neighbor and shout, that puts us in pretty good company, amen? That puts us in pretty good company. Number two, listen to me. What you see here is that when God empowers his people, watch this, watch this, we testify about Jesus. It all becomes about Jesus. See, a people who know will fail without his anointing are a people that when he moves, don't take any of the credit for it. Can I say that one more time? When people realize that they'll fail without the anointing of God's Holy Spirit and they position themselves begging God to work through them, when God works through them, they will give Jesus all the credit because they know it was never about them to begin with. Last night in our night of worship, we sang a song and in the course of the song, it says uh, uh, more about him and less about me, more about him and less about me. And that ought to be the theme of every one of us through this new year. God, I, wanna, I want it to be more about Jesus and less about me. And I promise you this, when the Holy Spirit begins working through us, you'll brag about Jesus and less about your personal preferences. Because it's not about us, it's all about him. And we get amazed and we get caught up in the awe that God would use ordinary people like us to give testimony to Jesus. Amen? That's what you have here in verses 3 to 12. I mean, listen, they didn't get up that day and go, hey, I think here's what we'll do. We'll get up and go down on the day of Pentecost and we'll go out in the street and let's all start preaching. Mary, you preach in Spanish. And Joe, you preach in Portuguese. And you, you, over, you, you, you preach in French. And everyone I'm looking at like, I don't know any of that, all right? Well, we gotta learn it overnight so we can do it tomorrow on the day of Pentecost. They didn't plan it. They said, and by the way, I believe at the end, 3,000 people are gonna get saved, amen. That's not how it happened. It happened by men and women who were so hungry for God to use. They're on their face, they're positioned, they're encouraging each other, they're taking advantage of the fellowship. They are praying. They're saying, God, we're gonna fail without you, but God, we want Jesus to be magnified. It wasn't about their glory, it was about Jesus' glory. And all of a sudden, suddenly God moved. See, number three is this, you gotta write it down. And this is what I believe God wants to do. You see, God wants to do a work, do more through a people than they've ever imagined he could. Look at the person beside you and say, God's gonna do more if you let him than you ever imagined. You hear me, online campus? God wants to do more than you've ever imagined or hoped for. God wants to work through you. See, they didn't know how God was gonna work. They didn't, they didn't plan out the day of Pentecost. They didn't know how that was gonna work. They had no preface for how God was gonna do this. They were just ready. How many know if you take the reins off of God and let God just be God 
and you just get before him and get open and willing and vulnerable and say, God, here's my life, here's my marriage, here's my children, here's my career, here's my finances, here's my gift sets, here's my time. God, I give everything over to you. Here's my church involvement. God, I'm gonna make the most of the weekends. I'm gonna make the most out of building relationships with my church family. I'm gonna get in a group. I'm gonna serve. I'm gonna grow in the Bible. I'm gonna read the scriptures. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna put my faith in that. God, I give it all to you. How many know that if that's your position, God will do more in and through you than you could ever ask, hope, or imagine? Amen? We have a prayer around here, and it's a prayer I'm gonna ask you to pray with me. It's something I say a lot, and I'm asking you to join me. Write this down. Online campus, pray this with me. God, do a work through the people here at CPC that only you get the credit for. How many want Jesus to get the glory and not us? Amen? Well, when we look back at 2023, we're gonna look back and we're not gonna brag on ourselves, we're gonna brag on Jesus, what he did, amen? And we can't live in the past, but the past should motivate us to get busy for tomorrow, amen? So watch this. We're gonna show you a video, highlight some of the highlights from this past year. And if any of that strikes you like you wanna get Baptist and give Jesus some praise, you need to do it. Last service, everybody wanted to, and you'd hear a few like, should I? And then by halfway through, they just quit worrying about it and did it. So I'm telling you up front, you got your shouting shoes on? Let's brag on Jesus a little bit, watch this. Let's reflect on the highlights of 2023, a year worth celebrating for our church family. We've experienced remarkable growth and witnessed countless stories of personal transformation, all testament to God's active presence among us. Yet, this is just the start of our journey. The introduction of our first multi-site in Bollinger County and our expanding reach into the region signal a new chapter. Our hope is that the lives touched by God's grace today will serve as a driving force spreading the gospel to thousands in the years ahead. As we come together to forge a new legacy, take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate the blessings of the past 12 months. This reflection isn't just about gratitude. It's a call to action, a recognition of the work that lies ahead and the collective impact we can make. God has done through you. 
you sharing the gospel, you inviting people, you being faithful to your giving, you serving, starting new groups. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead and be seated for just a minute longer. And uh, let me just share a couple things, put them on your heart. And then we're going to come around these altars and pray together. How many is just thankful what God's doing? If God would do that in 23, how many believe God can do even more in 2024? Amen. If we position ourselves and put our faith in action. So next week when we come back, next week I'm going to start a brand new series. I'm still preaching through the book of Acts. It's just now it's going to switch gears a little. And uh, the series is going to be called, let's see if you can catch on. If you catch on, I want you to finish, finish the title. Okay, you ready? Our series is going to be called Ready, Set, Go. There we go. We're going to get up to the starting line of being a church that puts their faith into action. We're going to pick up at, at, at the sermon of Peter in Acts chapter 2. We're going to look through Acts chapter 2 and 3 and 4. And we're going to see how the early believers put their faith into action. And we're going to line ourselves up because I want us to be ready and I want us to be set. And whenever the Holy Spirit says go, I want you to be ready to go. If it's at school, it's at work, it's out in the community, it's in our church, whatever. We want to be ready, set, so the Holy Spirit can always depend on us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Next weekend is a great time for some of you to go and make your faith public. And it's baptism Sunday next weekend. Come on, it's gonna be awesome in here. And some of you still need to be baptized and declare your faith. Sign up today. New groups are starting this week. And uh, some of you need to go ahead and sign up, get into a group. Then in February, we're gonna come back and we're gonna have 21 days of prayer and fasting. And if you've never been a part of our 21 days of prayer and fasting, listen, we, our staff write daily devotions for you. We give you some guidance through the 21 days. And God does miracles every year. I mean, literally, we hear of stories of lives being transformed, relationships being reconciled, God calling people into ministry and moving in their lives. I'm telling you, God does something when his people just get on their face and they commit to being so serious that they're willing to fast something while they seek the face of God. If you're like boy, preacher, I've never fasted food for 21 days, don't worry. We've got all kinds of ways to fast, not just all food, right? I mean, there's multiple ways to do this. We'll give you that information. Here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal. It's not as much about what you fast as it is why you fast. What is the motive? And we want you to take part in this. Online campus, we want you to do this with us. One of the things we're gonna ask you to really pray about is how God wants to use you in our mad offering coming up on March the 10th. You know that our church, uh, we, we're not ashamed to take up tithes and offerings every week, but what we don't do is we don't just keep coming back to you with another offering, another love offering. We do that one time a year and we set a big goal. Last year, our goal was 500,000. On Mad Sunday, you gave 507,000. How amazing was that? But here's what was crazy and we watched it happen all year. People kept jumping in that weren't even a part of the original MAD and they started giving weekly or monthly to the church and for MAD offering. And by the end of the year, we actually brought in $585,000 for MAD. How amazing is our God? That money, we, as you know, 10% of it, we give it away to missions and organizations. That's how we support the Belarus orphanage, not just counting what CAFE did for Christmas. We also support those uh, ministries to those orphans. We're in the Philippines. We helped start three church plants uh, this past year. We helped fund that. We did a lot of ministry in our community. And then we, this is how we pay off debt here. This is how we do uh, special projects as we keep growing and you can't foresee it to put it in the budget. Uh, and that's how MAD operates. This year, I'll tell you, MAD is gonna be another big go. And you need to be praying. We want you praying about it now. I will tell you this, what the MAD goal is won't meet our needs. Uh, it's gonna take a few years to meet the needs unless God lays on some of your hearts to go above and beyond MAD. And here's what I'm talking about. We still gotta finish these three parking lots. We paid about 60% of it off in cash already. We got about 40% to go. Our goal is to have these parking lots done 
um, uh, and hopefully by Easter, man, as soon as the asphalt companies start back up, man, we're going we're gonna to put blacktop down, right? As soon as we can, we'll have three parking lots and a new road. Then we got to renovate our building down at Marble Hill so that it looks like the CPC campus. So when you walk in there, you feel like you're in a mini CPC before we can launch weekend services. And in that time period, we're gonna be in the community. I need many of you to volunteer this year to go down, help us with outreach opportunities, do interest meetings, nights of worship down there, getting in the community, inviting people to come. And then as soon as the building's renovated, we'll open it up hopefully this fall to weekend experiences. How many believe God's gonna do a work in Cape Girardeau County, Bollinger County, and anywhere else he lets us reach out to, amen? We've got Easter and Christmas and Mother's Day and Father's Day and all these big events. We've got family dedications and baptisms and, and starting points and new groups. And by the summer, I'm going to need some of you to sign up uh, to be trained to be new small group hosts by this summer. Uh, with our growth, we're going to need more groups by the summertime. So be praying about that. Listen, I'm telling you, God is up to something at CPC and we want him to get all the credit and the glory. Can I get a witness from somebody? One of the things that we uh, challenge our people, our staff, and this is just, listen, when I talk about numbers, please, I want you to hear me. I want you to ever leave a, one of our services or watch online and say, well, they're about numbers. We are nothing about numbers. We are about souls. I want to win more people to Jesus. I want to populate heaven and depopulate hell at the same time. Can I get a witness from somebody? That's why we will never put a tap on how large we want to grow, but we do try to keep ourselves challenged. So uh, with our staff, what we do is we challenge them for double impact. We call it double impact. Every five years, we want to double. Uh, we believe that's systematic, that we can, it's a healthy measure of growth. What that means is, is we got to aim for 15% growth year over year in every area. T numbers, salvations, finances, whatever. Now, whatever happens, we give God all the glory. If it's more, if it's less, doesn't matter. It just means that we stay focused and on the mission. Okay, that's all it is. So let me show you something. When we ended in 2022, we averaged 1,257 people. God did a little better than 15% because at the end of 2023, our yearly average was 1,658 people. Can I get a praise from somebody for Jesus? Now, if that's our average for 23, then we say, okay, what's 15% growth? Well, that says this year we need to get our, our on-campus attendance average up to 1906. And that'll be a healthy 15% growth. Can I tell you how good God is? When we came back the first Sunday of the new year, the first Sunday of 2024, can I tell you how many people were on our campus that one Sunday? Not a holiday, just a normal Sunday. 1,885 people were already here. So, you know, you're like 21 people away from the yearly average. I believe we ought to raise that number up a little bit. Anybody with me today? Let's, listen, let's aim for a couple thousand people on campus on a regular Sunday. And it can happen. I mean, all it takes is you and I being in position. And when the Holy Spirit says, invite this one, go encourage that one, share the gospel with that one. Invite this one to come to church with you. We're willing and ready to be used by the Lord. And it's not about numbers. It is about people. Amen. Easter this year, we had 3,168. So that means our goal this year, let's get over 3,600 on this campus. Somebody shout, you better get the parking lots done. Amen. Uh, Y'all remember how chaotic it was last year. Easter this year, we had 2,605. That means let's go for 3,000 this coming year. Anybody join me today? How many believe God's gonna do above and beyond what we ever ask, hope, or imagine? We just gotta be in position, amen? So let me ask you, CPC, are you in? Are you in? How many of you want God to do a work in you and your family and in our church collectively that only God gets the glory for? How many want that? Now watch this. Listen carefully what I'm about to say. I'm gonna ask you that question one more time. And on campus, here's what I'm gonna ask of you. 
If you're sincere, yes, pastor, I want God to work in my life and my family and in our church collectively. And I want us to be in position that the Holy Spirit does a great work. I want to say, God, if you can use me, use me. If that's you, then when I ask the question this next time, and if your answer is yes, here's what I want you to do. Are you listening? Shout, I'm listening. I want you to stand up and I want, I want you to make your way down here to the front of the stage and down every aisle. The worship team's gonna come out and they're gonna sing a song called Trust in God. And while they're singing, I'm gonna ask you, no one's gonna lead you. You gotta be willing to do this on your own. While we're worshiping, I want you either on your knees or standing, however you want to. I want you praying and I want you asking God. We're gonna have an upper room, day of Pentecost prayer meeting over 2024 and say, God, if you don't bless us, we won't accomplish what you want. But God, if you'll come and you'll use us, we'll be willing and we are ready. Anybody agree with me today? Online campus, you can't come forward, but you can stand, you can put your hand toward the screen, wherever you are, you can join us in this prayer time, okay? Let's commit ourselves, let's commit this church to Jesus for the rest of this year and see what God will do. We, are, will you join me? Are you in? If you are, stand up and come on, let's pray. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been the fourth man in the fight, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never And he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord 
and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard. Today, we're just going to leave the altars open. If you still want to hang out and pray, you are welcome to it. If you uh, want somebody to pray with you, there'll be altar workers up here at the front. Also, as, as soon as you leave to the left, there's also prayer rooms. If you want somebody to, to agree with you in prayer there, we are here for you today. Go and be blessed. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. And remember, trust God. Amen. We'll see you next week. <laughs>